Hello everyone, and today we're going to focus on replacing our outer tie rods on our 2015 Nissan Ultima. And if you look right at the boot, you can see there's a nice size gash in it, and it looks like it's due to dry riding over time. So we're going to go ahead and replace the driver's side and passenger side today. So let's get started. And for our very first step, let's go ahead and loosen up our lug nuts with our 21mm socket and a breaker bar. And we're not going to remove them, we're just going to break them loose before we go ahead and lift up the vehicle. So we'll go ahead and start with the first one. Alright, so that's one. There's two, three, four, and five. So now we can go ahead and slide under our service jack and lift up the vehicle. And we're going to go ahead and lift this all the way up just so we can get a jack stand under it. And let's go ahead and raise it up just a little bit. That looks like it's in a good spot. And lower it down very gently. And it looks like it's taking the weight right there. So let's go ahead and check it. Yep, looks pretty good. And with a nice gap under the wheel, we can go ahead and remove the lug nuts and remove this wheel. So that should be number four five and go ahead and lift this wheel and we'll go ahead and set that aside and now that we're in a better position let me go ahead and bring in the camera I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit uh, up a little bit more there we go all right so i'm gonna go ahead and take a marker pen and go ahead and mark the orientation of where the locking nut or the jam nut is as well as the tie rod i want to make sure it shows which way is upward for the inner tie rod as well as the jam nut and by marking it this way this will also provide a reference point of where the jam nut is located on the inner tie rod now for this step you do not have to do this at all this is just me being curious so I'm measuring between the boot and the center of the ball joint. And looking at it, it looks about to be, I don't know, 12 and a quarter inches. So when we change out to the new tie rod, it should be to a similar length. And now that we have everything marked up and ready to go, let's go ahead and loosen up the jam nut. So we'll take a 22 millimeter wrench and a 19 millimeter wrench, and we'll see if we can loosen this up. So I'm on the driver's side, which means I'm gonna go clockwise on the jam nut. And yeah, that's definitely on there really good. Let me go ahead and put some penetrating WD-40 in there, let it sit for a few minutes, and we'll try it again. Put a nice little hefty amount in there. All right, so get my 22 millimeter wrench. Give it another turn. Yeah, that's definitely on there. All right, so let's bring out the heat. So I'll go ahead and take my heat gun, and I'll go ahead and let it sit on there for about a minute. I'm pointing it downward just to make sure I don't get it on anything else. And that looks pretty good. We even dried up some of that WD-40. Now let's go ahead and try this jam nut one more time. Come on, there we go, we'll loosen it right up. And now we'll work our way to the ball joint and we have a cotter pin that we need to remove first. So I'm gonna grab my neo nose pliers and see about bending that cotter pin back to straighten out so I can pull this right through that little hole. And I'm gonna try to as best I can, just takes a second, it's a little rusty. Get the camera out of the way. And let's see if we can get this a nice good pull. Yeah, there we go, almost hit the camera. Now let's go ahead and grab our 19mm socket and socket wrench, and let's go ahead and loosen up this ball joint nut. And it's on there pretty good as well. Give it a nice tug. There we go. Loosen it right up. At this angle, we can get a little more leverage on it. I'm going to go and loosen it up to where it's flush to the bottom of that stud. Now if you like, you can remove the nut completely, but I want to show you what happens when we do it on the passenger side later on. So now we get to try out one of our new toys, which is a ball joint separator. And this is exactly what it's made for, to get a tie rod out of a steering knuckle. So we'll go ahead and place that right between the boot and the steer knuckle, and I'll go ahead and turn it aside. Doesn't matter, that boot's already trashed. And then I'll grab my 24 millimeter socket and socket wrench, and we'll go ahead and tighten this right out until this ball joint pops right out of the steering knuckle. And after a few turns, and there we go. And like we mentioned earlier, since that ball joint's hosed, I can just take a pair of vice grips to the stud just so I can go ahead and loosen this nut right off. And there we go. So that came right off, take my vice grips out, and this should just pop right up. There we go. And it's pretty much downhill from here. So let's go ahead and remove the tie rod. All we have to do is just unscrew it. So I'm gonna hold the jam nut in place as well as the inner tie rod, just so nothing moves. And we'll go ahead and unscrew the tie rod, going counterclockwise. And there we go, fell right out. Yeah, it looks pretty good, other than it's rusty. So let's go ahead and compare the new one and the old one. So let's go ahead and unbox our new one. It's supposed to be an OEM replacement. And putting it side by side, it looks pretty similar. We got the correct side. There is a left side and a right side, so be aware. And we got our bag with our new cotter pin and a washer and nut. That's good. And let's go ahead and pick up the old Tyron new one and compare it. And look at them, they look really good. So far, it looks like the links are almost exactly the same. I don't really see any difference here, other than the new one looks like 10 times better. So looking at that, yeah, I think we're in good shape. I think we can go ahead and keep moving forward. So now we can go ahead and install our new tie rod the same way the old one came out, but instead we'll go ahead and screw it in clockwise. And I'm going to screw this in all the way to the jam nut. And several turns later, 
Looks pretty good. I'm gonna move the jam nut just a hair. And right there, it looks pretty good. It's not gonna be perfect compared to the new to old one, but you wanna get as close as possible. And then I'll go ahead and move that ball joint a little bit. And we'll go ahead and insert that right in the knuckle. There we go, it fits pretty good. And now let's go ahead and install the washer and then install our castle nut. And I apologize, my hands are in the way. And there we go. And just keep in mind, the castle nut should be faced downward to match up that hole. And 20 turns later, we'll go ahead and snug this up with our 19 millimeter socket and socket wrench. We don't want to tighten it up, we just want to snug it. Okay, it feels pretty good. Then I'll go ahead and grab my torque wrench, set to 25 foot pounds, and let's go ahead and torque this down. And get in a good spot. Yeah, a few more turns. There we go. Now looking at this, you want to make sure that castle nut is lined up with the hole that's in the stud. And looking at it, yeah, it's a little bit off. Sadly, it does not match up perfect. Eh, it's not going to happen every time. But that's no problem. We'll go ahead and take that 19 millimeter wrench and go ahead and tighten it just a little bit until it lines right up. So give that a nice little turn. Probably a little bit more. And that looks pretty good right there. So yep, the hole matches up perfectly. Now we can insert our cotter pin. And it's pretty simple. Cotter pin goes right through the hole. And I'm probably going to have to move my camera aside. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and move it. Let's be on the safe side. That way you can see what I'm seeing. All right, so now I got the cotter pin in place. I'm going to go ahead and hold it with one hand, take my new nose pliers, and go ahead and spread out the ends. And by doing this, this will ensure that castle nut does not fall off at any point in time because that would be bad. So I'll go ahead and spread these completely out. And now I'll take my new nose pliers and we'll just go ahead and finish it off. We'll go ahead and wrap it around the nut completely. And taking a good look at it, yep, looks pretty good. So now let's go ahead and tighten up our jam nut. Now I'm doing this with wrenches. I prefer to have a crow's foot because that way I can get a torque wrench on there. However, we're going to have to do this with regular wrenches and just tighten it down. Now with everything snugged up, let's go ahead and check our measurements. And this is to the reference to the center of the ball joint. And it looks to be about, yeah, about 12 and a quarter. Very similar to what it was when we started. That's a great sign. I think we're safe enough to go ahead and drive this right to the alignment shop. And now for the back braking work, let's go ahead and install the wheel and lug nuts. So I'll go ahead and lift it up, brace it with my leg, and we'll go ahead and install our lug nuts. Just get them nice and snug. And I'm going to go ahead and do a star pattern. Anytime you tighten your lug nuts, you always want to do a star pattern. And that's pretty snug. So let's go ahead and lift up the vehicle. And let's give it one more pump. There we go. And let's see about removing our jack stand. Get that right out of the way. And let's go ahead and lower our service jack and lower vehicle. And do it as smoothly as you can, of course. And there we go. And now let's go ahead and take our torque wrench and it's set to 83 foot pounds. And let's go ahead and tighten up all five of these lug nuts. And we're again, we're going to do this right in the start pattern. So there's two, three, four, and five. And we're going to repeat the exact same steps on the passenger side as well. And just something I want to show you, looking at the passenger side boot, you can see it's dry rotted really bad. So this one was not too far from being ripped as well. And that one thing I want to show you with the ball joint, I went ahead and took off the nut. I want to show you what happens when I tighten it up without the nut on there. And look at that, that thing flung up very dangerously and very fast. So it's something just to be aware of. And look at that, that job turned out really easy and fairly quick. And just as an FYI, you will need a wheel alignment after changing out your tie rods because your alignment's not gonna be perfect. It's gonna be close, but not perfect. Now, just to show you a cost comparison, a shop did give us a quote of what would it cost just to change out the tie rods, nothing more. And looking at it, if you include the alignment, it's $402. However, it only cost us $153, giving us a savings of $249. Well, if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe.